right, so I spent just a few minutes and I went ahead and finished this up. So you can see it's nothing to write home about, but it at least has a nice kind of taper off here, which I did just with a combination of using the length tool and smoothing. And I just cleaned up the lips here a little bit and the upper lip. So what I might want to do before I go on to my next step is to add a little bit of noise so it's not all so even. Now be careful with the noise. It's actually a couple of things are defaults here that can actually ruin your day a little bit. So the first thing is we do not want to change the width of the hairs, especially because this is actually pretty large compared to the size of our hairs, which you can see over here are about 0 0.02. So we could easily double the size of our hairs without even knowing it. So I'm going to turn that off. I also don't want that much offset at the normal. So I'm going to put that down to about 0.2. Basically, I'm really just interested in adding a bit of change to the middle and tip. And I probably don't want as much rotation either. So I'm going to turn those down just a little bit. Go ahead and shrink the size of my brush. And I'll add just a little bit of noise here. And even that seems like it's a bit much. So I'll bring those down. There we go. And I'm just going to come in here and add a little bit of noise in there. I might go with a slightly larger brush. That might be a little bit too little now. We'll increase that just a touch. There we go. Just enough to make it feel a little bit more random. Now this one I'm not going to mirror over. I'm going to go ahead and just get both sides here. It only takes a moment anyway. And this is also not our only way to create noise. There will be a couple of other ways as you'll see shortly. So I don't need to make sure I hit every single hair in here. Just enough to kind of break things up a little bit, especially in areas where we might be looking pretty consistently. I also don't need to be concerned that every hair is of very even length that's going to be very easy to correct as well. Trying to go in here and use the length tool to try to get different lengths constantly is really just a battle that there's no reason to fight at all, as you'll see. But okay, I've added in a bit of noise there. So my next step is to probably leave working with these groom splines and take a look at what the actual geometry will look like. So what I'm going to do is actually come down here and turn off the visibility on my splines. And instead, I'm going to come up here and turn on this eyeball to actually see the hairs. And we could see that, well, they look like something. <laughs> they look like cylinders. Uh, they don't quite look like hairs, or at least not the type of hairs that I want. So we need to go over here to the Primitives tab and begin adjusting them. For starters, I can work on the density here. There might not be enough hairs here right now. So what I will do is briefly go back to grooming, and I'm going to turn off sync over here. So that these two are no longer connected to each other. Oh, and by the way, I did up this to 125. We were at 75 in the previous clip. But through interpolate, that actually was fairly smooth. I'll go back to primitives here, and maybe I want to up this to 250. To see that, I'll click the eyeball again, and you can see that'll update for me. FYI, anything that's outside of the range when you do an update doesn't get solved. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. So 250 might be okay for right now. I'm going to go ahead and drop down a little bit over to my length and width. Now notice both length and width have expressions in them. That's because they're connected to our grooming utilities. So we don't want to touch these, but what I can control is this ramp and this taper over here. So let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more space here. Right there. And I'm going to come over here and turn on Update Preview Automatically. And you can see now I can actually drop the tip as well as the root of the hair to thin it back out. And you can see it starts to look much, much better. And this is moving almost in real time, and that's because we don't have that many hairs here. So of course, I can thin it out even more, but I'm going to keep them a little bit thick. I can also taper along the length of each hair right here. So I can kind of bring that down to almost nothing, which wouldn't really be the case for facial hair that'd be a little bit more coarse than that. There we go. So there are more settings here, but notice I can't really get access to them because again, they are driven by expressions. You can do a normal tilt or around the normal, but there's really no reason to do any of that, at least not for us. This would be more for offsetting purposes. There we go. We'll just put those back at our defaults. All right. So we have our hairs here. They don't look too bad, but 
In all honesty, they also don't look that good. They're very even still. And I probably want even more. I'm going up to about 500. So what we can do is take a look at running these hairs through some filters. So to do that, I can jump over here to the Modifiers tab, click the plus, and for example, let's go ahead and add a cut modifier. What a cut modifier is going to do is make some hairs longer and some hairs shorter. And it's doing it through this random expression here. So it's cutting them anywhere between nothing and 0.2. I'll up that to maybe 0.6. And you can see that's now made some hairs very short and some hairs longer. We'll go ahead and maybe drop that to 5. Now that has caused me to lose some hairs. We'll go ahead and re-preview. But overall, I like the effect that it's given me. Now to go ahead and keep that from seeming so intense, I'll probably come back to the primitives and maybe up this to 1,000. There we go. So now it's still fairly thick, but you could see we definitely have some of this nice drop off in here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my modifiers and let's also maybe add some noise. So I'll select noise right here. Now that's going to be pretty crazy by default, so we want to bring that down. I'll take my magnitude over here and drop that to maybe 0.2. And you can see there's a little bit of craziness there still. I'm going to go ahead and drop the effect at the tip right there a little bit. We might go ahead and maybe increase the frequency so we get a little bit more hair kind of, or excuse me, a little bit more noise along the length there. I can even try dropping that a bit more. Actually, I think 0.2 is okay. I don't mind if a few of these are a little kind of off over there. And you can see we've gotten a lot more life to the beard now. So it's actually starting to look like hair. Now there are other modifiers here. Not all of these are really going to apply to what we want. However, we will take a look at some more of these in our next module when we actually cover working with hair because they will be a little bit more relevant there. I'll jump back to my primitives tab. And if you find that you don't have enough resolution in your hairs, let's say you start seeing some jagged shapes on them, you could always come over here and up your modifier count, let's say 8, and that'll smooth out your hairs a little bit more. It's just like adding resolution. So I think we're actually looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with what we have. There is one other change I want to show you that you can make here. Right now we're at tube shade. I can change this to not be tube shade, basically flat shaded. And that can help you if your viewports are running very, very slow. It will give a slightly different look to the color, so that is something to be aware of. But anyway, so far so good. I'm going to turn my tube shade back on. So in the next clip, let's take a look at how we can further enhance this by taking a look at our shader as well as a few other options. I'll see you all there.